Hello, science fiction fans, and welcome to my channel. I'm Peg, and I love to read and report on all the latest science fiction, um, both short stories and novels that have been published recently. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a short story, again, from this book, uh, this anthology that I am working through. Um, this one is by Gregory Benford, uh, a prolific science fiction writer, and the name of this story is called Vortex. Uh, before I get into the story, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the author. Uh, Benford has written many, has published many novels and short stories, and it's amazing that he's also a professor of physics in California, and evidently is still working. Um, so the fact that he's an actual uh, physics professor means that most of his uh, science fiction is what is termed hard science fiction. I would say it's very hard science fiction, but it's not so difficult that you, that the reader can't understand it especially if you are willing to look up a few terms and, and think about it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I, he has written, as I said, many, uh, many novels, and I realized after I, got, I read this that I have in my collection um, this novel, Timescape, that he wrote in the early 1980s and won the Nebula Prize that year for I, anxious to read it. Actually, I haven't, uh, haven't read this yet. I just happen to I have a lot I haven't read. Um, <clears throat> also, he has just published a book, which I also have and am reading, called The Berlin Project. And uh, this is an alternate history type um, uh, story where it's during before the First World War. And in this instance, the Americans are able to uh, develop the atom bomb in time to use it on Germany. And it uh, suggests, I'm not very far into it, but suggests that it also involves a spy story, which I really like. That's my second kind genre I really like after science fiction is spy stories. So I'm really uh, looking forward to finishing that book. Um, and I'll probably report on it in a few days or so. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, let's see. The story Vortex takes place on Mars, and it's, um, as it's opening up, there's actually two groups of explorers on Mars. Now, Mars is dried out on the surface and not of much interest to anybody, it appears, at this time. And um, there are, are t two groups there. 20 years ago, a couple, and I guess... A group came, a Western group came, uh, no, no, the only ones that are left are a couple after 20 years. I mean, the others went home. Uh, and um, so they feel that they belong there and, and, and know much about it. Um, there's also a Chinese biological study group that has arrived fairly recently. And there seems to be a little bit of tension and friction between these two groups. The Chinese, of course, have much better equipment since they're just coming, and the others have been there 20 years. And uh, you can tell they think maybe the Westerners weren't very safe ecologically and made sort of a mess of some things. Um, anyway, it opens when um, representatives from the two groups, the couple, and then one uh, Chinese man are taking a tour underneath in the caverns that have been built and uh, underneath of Mars. And this is where all the interest now lies. It's a very good world building. Uh, somehow they, there's a material underneath the surface that's called mat, Mars mat. And it's a very uh, strange material. Uh, it can form into different colors and human human type skin and uh, sometimes it's like a mucus and then it's like a crystal and uh, there are signs that it's actually a living sentient object 
which is kind of creepy. But um, it was very well done. I have kind of felt like I was down there in the cave with him looking at this um, uh, Mars mat. Um, I don't want to give too much away. Actually, as I said, there's a little bit of friction between the f f two groups. Uh, with the one thinking they know more than the other because they've been there longer, and the Chinese thinking they know more because they have better technology. So I will leave it at that. The only uh, other thing that's actually quite ironic is that while they're there or just after during the events of this story, they find out that North Korea has attacked the West and destroyed all the uh, communication satellites. So they now have no way to communicate back to Earth and the possibility exists that they might never get, ever get back to Earth, which seems to make the problems they're having all the more difficult to deal with. You know, that's all I'm gonna say on it. It's a great story. I'd love to hear some other points of view on this story or anything by ben, Benford. So let me know if you've read it or have anything to say. Uh, so I'll be back soon with another review. Thanks, bye.